This image was taken just off Fitzroy Street. No, just off Brunswick Street in Fitzroy. It's the side wall of a pub that I used to actually spend quite a lot of time in seeing bands like Hunters and Collectors, Crown of Thorns, The Foves, for you old people out there, called The Punters Club. But it's since called Baby Biblo, I don't know, something. What's it, Bimbo? Bimbo? On Brunswick Street, would that be right? Something like that. I used to live just around the corner, literally from this shop, and I was driving home. And it was literally driving along, and I'm often driving and doing this all the time. And I just went, oh God, I've got to stop. And I quickly pulled over and stopped, jumped out of the car, probably took about three or four minutes framing up a few different versions of this. And um, I just, I just, I don't know, it was, it was so beautiful and perfect, and I can tell even then how much I was going to love it. And I've loved it ever since. And this is one of the images, there's only a few images that have blown up, been blown up really big more than once. And this is one of those that's been blown up really big a few times. Because there are other people that, that get what I got that day. That was the era where I owned the, D, the Nikon D700 and the Nikon D3. They were both 12, the best 12 me megapixel cameras in the universe. They were amazing, completely blew my mind when they both came out. But it's one of the two, because they basically had the same sensor in them. So 12 megapixel Nikon, but there was, I, could, I can talk about that, those two cameras forever. They were amazing for their era. Game changers. So um, printing something like this, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit harder than just doing print. It's quite a lot of settings we've got to go through and do. So we go into print settings and we have to choose the correct substrate of which you can see we have lots. In this case we're going with uh, one we made last year which is called Colour Canvas 2016. Then we have to choose the size. Oops, and we've got so many sizes. Check them all out. These are all the different sizes we print. These are all customized by us. Heaps. Anyhow, here's one, which is uh, 1.6 meters by almost 2.4 meters, which is just about spot on. And as you can see, the image is fitting correctly in the preview window. Then we have to choose for Photoshop to manage the colors instead of the printer, and then the correct color profile for this particular canvas. Every single different substrate has to be profiled. This is the one for this one. We like perceptual, we like black point compensation, and that's all correct, sizing is all correct. So we hit print, and off it goes to the printer. So the title is When You're a Jet. There's the film, West Side Story, which is a kind of a remake of Romeo and Juliet. And in West Side Story, there's a song called When You're a Jet. I think that's the title of the song. There's the, the, there's the two cl clans, like in Romeo and Juliet, and one of the clans is the Jets. What I saw in this photo was you have two different brands of beer, and it was like they were having a fight. And in the film West Side Story, there, and in right, Romeo and Juliet, the two clans are always fighting. So, thus, it's the two beer clans fighting when you're a jet. There are people who've come up to me and they've worked it out. They've worked the title out, which I love. It recently happened at a, an exhibition I had late last year with, with Robin Cartwright, actually. So there was a gentleman who bought massive version of this for his home. But yeah, some people have worked the title out that it's based on the when you're a jet, um, West Side Story and the, and the fighting clans. Uh, so this printer, it's the only printer on the market, which is a 64 inch printer in the G clay, meaning it's French word for fine droplet. So in the G clay printer space, fine art printing space, uh, Canon make a 60 inch, but for some reason Epson decided to make a 64 inch. So four more inches, about 12 cent 10 to 12 centimeters. Um, and that allows us to be able to put a 63 inch canvas roll, which is what we've got on here. 
And that way we can do 1.5 meter canvases and still have the wrap. Whereas with a 60 inch you can't do that. Epson rate the archivalness of these prints for color, 150 years and black and white over 200 years, which is just, and what that means is, as long as they're correct, they're stored correctly, the colors will not even start to change color for that long, 150 years. And then they might go for another 150 years. Might be 300 years before they fade away completely. So um, it's good stuff. In all honesty, it's hard to say why one likes something. You know, you and I, we might go into a shoe shop and you and I, we're drawn to completely different shoes. The reason I'm saying that is not because I can see it and you can't. The reason I'm saying that is sometimes I don't know. It's just innate. It's just a feeling. And often with these sorts of things, and this has happened before that I'm driving along and I get a split second, like one, like it's just, that's it. And I know I've got to stop. And then, it, then I can break it down after the fact. Like I can tell you now after the fact, probably what excited me, but I can't really answer the question as to why I knew in that split second, if that makes any sense. But I, I would have seen the textures the sunlight was on it, so the textures are exaggerated because every little, every little ripple, every little thing that sits out creates a tiny little shadow which gives it depth. And as I've said to you before, I love anything that creates depth. You know, if we can turn this flat medium into something that feels like it's real and you're there, then that's awesome. So I would have seen the sun, the shadows, the colours, the depths. Love these textures, love those textures. Seen that there was kind of this, I don't know how to describe this, but kind of like you know how people stand around at bus stops and you kind of have this random group of people standing there, but often it looks cool? Well, they were doing that. The beer kegs were standing around randomly looking cool. They were being cool, all on their own, just there. There were no beer kegs harmed during the, the making of this film, nor did I touch any of them. I do not move things to make them look better. This is how it was. Okay, so this light is daylight balanced, which means the colour temperature is correct for me, assessing whether everything's working correctly with the colours. And also we want to have a really close look at whether there's any banding or any of those sorts of things happening, and there's not. So we are good to go. So the next thing that happens is this comes down onto this roll and then it gets rolled up because this thing is this thing is as big as a bed. It's bigger than a bed. Beds are only two meters long. This is two and a half meters long. So um, they're very difficult to handle unless we roll them up. And this machine does it. Not all machines do that. Cool, looking good. Um, this will take about an hour to print the entire thing. Uh, there is about four square meters of canvas and about four square meters of ink, so it's very expensive to print. There we go. Lovely! I think as a photographer, it's a really important, like it, it's, it's a super important skill to always be looking. I know that sounds stupid, but in, that, in, a, in another video that you two can watch, we talk about the fact as to what inspires me and it's the world that inspires me rather than me having a vision that I'm trying to fulfill. Now, if I had a vision I was trying to fulfill, I'd be looking for that vision. I wouldn't have seen it because it's not there, is it? Because it, it's something else and I would have dri driven past. So my world is about interpreting the, the world and not interpreting some other vision. So that's what stopped me, is that I knew that this was a beautiful still life. That's my, straight away it was like, oh, that's all perfect. What I have to do is go, all right, well, what, you know, what, 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 what's the focal length? So how much do you zoom? Because you've got all those choices. Where do you stand? I could stand further away or closer. You know, I could have just grabbed this bit or, so there's all these choices about balance. You know, what, what's the right spot for this? Where should this be? And 
Should they be, you know, there's all these choices that then you make while you're standing there to create, for me, what is that balanced, perfect frame. It was a still life sitting there waiting to be captured. So here I am in my very sexy uh, laminating gear. For my eyes. Okay. All right, we're good to go. Okay, so that is coat number one. And we wait for about one to two minutes and then do coat number two. So much fun being in that mask, I tell you. The glamour of photography, the glamour of being an artist. But this thing is very beautiful. And uh, as you can see, once you get the laminate on it, the colours start to pop a little bit more. They probably pop another 30% once the laminates on it because it's like putting a piece of glass on a picture. So the surface goes from being a matte surface, oh that's me, matte surface, to, uh, to a glossy or semi-matte surface. Okay, coat number two, here we go. So this time we do it in the opposite direction to create an even surface. And I don't know why I sound like Jeremy Clarkson from Top Gear, but I do. Maybe he's always talking like he's in a mask. Or maybe not. Whew. So now we uh, take that inside to dry. As we work our way through the forest, through the jungle of books, to find the resting place of when you're a jet, you're a jet all the way from your first dying breath. From your first breath to, ah, can't remember how it goes.